Hey everybody, Tim Corpus, composer and sound designer here. Uh, excited to be back. This is my new studio. Uh, I'll have to give you a tour at some point, but today we're gonna go ahead and take a look at some uh, Touch OSC stuff, and we're gonna go ahead and pair it with GarageBand. So a lot of people are using some of the advanced DAWs, things like Reaper, Pro Tools, Ableton, Cubase, uh, but there are a lot of folks out there who are using GarageBand. Maybe it's to set up and record a podcast, or maybe you're on the road, or you just like the simple interface of GarageBand. Uh, that's great. And there are some MIDI capabilities. I'll say that it's not as advanced and easy to set up as I would have liked, uh, but I was definitely able to get this iPad to control GarageBand, uh, just a few things in MIDI. So we're gonna go ahead and set that up. Now to do this, I was having a lot of trouble uh, pairing the iPad with my MacBook. I've got a 2017 MacBook. This is an older iPad. I think it's from like, maybe 2014, um, the Wi-Fi or Bluetooth connection was pretty finicky. So the best way for this to work out is with a USB cable. So first you wanna go ahead and download the app on your iPad, uh, make sure you do that. And then once you got that, let's jump into our MacBook and uh, load up GarageBand. So this is GarageBand. You can see it's picking me up right here. Uh, this is just the uh, general microphone for the MacBook. Uh, and you can see I've added a couple more instruments in here. But the first thing we wanna do, let's go ahead and connect our iPad. So I'm just gonna go ahead and plug it in here. So we are plugged in and what we need to do is make sure that the settings are correct. So uh, the first thing we want to go to is audio MIDI setup. Uh, and to get to this, I had to go ahead and search it in the finder, but I've got it all set up here. Uh, and once you get this, this will show you your microphones, your inputs, your outputs. If you were to have a MIDI keyboard, it would show up here as well. Uh, so let's go ahead and select this iPad as you can see, and you need to enable it. So click enable. And you can see in GarageBand, it's popping up because it's recognizing a new device as well. So here we are, we have our iPad and it is connected. Awesome, let's go ahead and close that out. And then here in GarageBand, um, this is just a general project that I started. Uh, there's nothing fancy about this. Let's hit GarageBand and then our preferences. And then here in Audio MIDI, we can see that there are different setups. Uh, if you weren't seeing your item after it was set up with a computer, you could reset MIDI drivers, um, but it shouldn't be a problem. Now, I did not have to set this as MIDI controller to get it to do anything, um, and I left it on iPad, but you could also have it on built-in microphone, uh, and we'll see you know, some of the ways that this can work. All right, so you're set up on the MacBook. Now let's jump into the iPad into Touch OSC and uh, get that set up. So you've downloaded the app and it's set up on your iPad. Uh, let's go ahead and select that links button in the top right. And we need to add our connection. So uh, there are a variety of different options, but what we're gonna do with this, because GarageBand is relatively simple in what it can handle, we're going to work with just MIDI. So let's turn on that connection one and then browse. And here you go, uh, this MIDI host, that is the one I am going to select. Now, network session one, that would be my Wi-Fi. Bridge one would go to my desktop, so we don't want that. Um, I am recording with my desktop right now, so that's why it's on with this. Uh, but yeah, we want this IDAM MIDI host. All right, so we got that set. Let's go ahead and click done. Now, the first thing we're gonna do is control the volume of one of our tracks. So let's go ahead and add in a fader. So I'm doing this all from the iPad. Uh, I'm not using the desktop editor. So you, you know, select here and you can push and hold and it'll give you this menu. You could also hit this plus button at the top and that would give you this option. So let's pull in a fader make that a bit bigger. Uh, this is gonna be for our track volume. 
All right, so if we select this, all I had to do is touch it on the iPad and pull open this window here on the right. And you can see all the details for everything we're working on um, in this template. So uh, one thing that we want to do, we have width and height. This is kind of a portrait mode, but we're working with this in landscape. So let's swap these 860 by 640. Awesome. So now you can see if you were to hit the play button, the uh, space that we have to work with in our template is uh, the same size as our screen. All right, so you hit that dot in the top to get out of that. And now let's scroll down here to edit the messages that are going out of this fader. So we have an OSC message, but we don't need that. Let's go ahead and X that and remove that, okay? Because we're only working with MIDI right now. All right, so we've got a lot of different things going on here. Uh, this is a control change. And in order to control the volume, what we need, we're gonna use program channel one, but we need CC7. So let's hit index right here, change that to constant, and move this up to seven. All right, so we've got that. Let's select out of this and hit the play button, and now we have this active. If we were in GarageBand, you can see I'm gonna select, uh, let's select this classic piano. And now if I move this fader up and down, you can see I'm moving the volume. That was a really quick and easy setup. Some DAWs definitely aren't as intuitive, but I will note that we are not doing MIDI Learn, which is kind of unfortunate. Now, if you're working with a more advanced DAW, you can do MIDI Learn, but from here, all we're doing is working with the general MIDI CC. Uh, those mappings all include a link to what the, uh, the usual suspects are for those CC control numbers, um, but we are not doing MIDI Learn. Unfortunately, it's just not possible. But this fader works. So, you know, if you're going around, you can quickly change your volume, which is, you know, it's a nice, neat trick. That's good. Another one we could do, let's add in uh, panning. So if you were to uh, close out of this, let's go ahead and add a radial. So we have our radial. This is going to be for panning. Let's go ahead and change this color. Scroll down here. And let's make that kind of this pinky purple. And to control panning, what we need to do, let's remove the OSC message, because again, we can't use it here. Uh, and let's go to constant. And this is going to be program one, uh, channel one, CC 10. All right, so we got that. Let's try that one out. So hit play. And here, let's select our audio one. And you can see as we move this radial, we can control the panning, we can control the volume, select the next one, change that panning, and then the Blue Ridge drums and change that panning. Again, super simple when using these standardized CC numbers. This is pretty simple stuff, uh, and granted this would be useful if you're mixing and you wanna work quickly, uh, but let's take it a step further. Let's look at another way that we can use some of the shortcuts in GarageBand that we can't set up MIDI Learn, but we already have some sort of key bind uh, in the shortcuts. Let's go ahead and set that signal to be sent from Touch OSC. So what we're gonna need now is another software. Uh, let's go ahead and check that out. So to change the signals that we're sending, we're gonna need a software called Osculator, and it is free, um, super easy to work with. So go ahead and down this, osculator.net, and get this set up. So I've already downloaded it, so let's go ahead and pull that up for her. So I'm not gonna check for updates because I know it is updated, but you should always stay up to date on these things. So this is where we can control our messages, we can change a MIDI message that we're sending or an OSC message, and we can turn it into a key bind or a MIDI note. So this is actually a really cool way uh, to set up some things. So let's go ahead and do that. So if we were to touch our fader here, we're not receiving a message, but what we need to do is go to this uh, gear here, select that, and we can see our MIDI input ports. So we wanna turn on input from the iPad, right? And now that that is set up, we can close this. And now let's go ahead and touch that fader and we can see CC7, exactly what we were sending before. So let's go ahead and add a button. 
So let's uh, add a button right here, make that a little bit bigger, and let's make that blue. Great. So this is going to be a button to press play. Really simple. I mean, you could just hit the space bar, but you'll see what I mean. So let's go down here and let's select our blue button and let's get rid of the OSC message because we don't need that. And to send the play message, uh, what we're going to do is actually use an unmarked or an unused standardized MIDI message um, that's currently not paired with anything and we'll use that and turn it into uh, the message that we're going to send a key bind so let's use one that we know is not being used so we're going to do controller constant and let's set this to 102 perfect and now we can go ahead and hit play so now here on oscillator if we hit that blue button, we see that 102 uh, is being sent. But what event type do we want to turn this into? Let's turn this into a key code. And we want this to be space. All right, so let's go back into GarageBand. Here we are, and let's hit that blue button. And now we're playing. Now if we hit that blue button again, we stop. Same thing, hit it, play, hit it, stop. It's exactly the same as hitting your space bar, but if for some reason you wanted to put that on an iPad, you could. Maybe this is a remote control while you have, you know, your MacBook or your Mac desktop set up somewhere and you're away from it. That would work too. And you could do the same thing for recording. So let's change that from play to record. So back in Oscillator, uh, let's go ahead and select this key code. It's space bar right now. Let's change that to the letter R. Oh, that's Z, the letter R. All right. Now back in here, uh, we have our drums selected. Let's hit that blue, and we are recording right now. Hit that again, and it doesn't stop. It stops recording, as you can see right there. So that's one thing to watch out for. So these are easy ways to set up maybe a control from a distance. Let's say you're in a vocal booth and you wanna be able to control everything. You don't wanna run back and forth uh, between your computer. This is a great way to set up, you know, play, rewind, uh, record, and to do, you know, your different takes over and over and not have to run around. Super useful. But let's say you're working relatively close to your desktop or your laptop uh, and you want to control something like drums. Let's make a drum controller, something kind of similar to this LPD-8, uh, which is a great little device. Uh, I use it all the time. I used to use it even more. Um, so let's act like we can make uh, a couple songs uh, and we'll just play the instruments through the iPad. So we're going to need to add three more buttons. We hit our button here and add that and let's make this a circle so if we scroll down here we're gonna make this yellowish and we don't want a rectangle we want a circle great this is gonna be our symbol so we'll put that here uh, let's make another circle so we have a button Whoa. move that down here and let's make this a little bit like an orange. And let's make, that is not an orange. There is a sh an orange. Uh, let's make this into a circle. This will be like our snare drum. And then let's make another. And yeah, you got to watch out for that. Uh, super annoying, but that's what you get when you're dealing with touch. Touch isn't perfect. All right, let's make this into, you know, some sort of dark green. And we will make this also a circle. This is going to be our bass drum. So let's go ahead and give them all MIDI messages. And we're going to deal with just ones that I know are open. So uh, let's go to the bass drum. Let's X at that OSC message. We don't need that. Controller, we're going to go to constant. And then we're going to go to 104. And then our snare drum. Let's go ahead and remove the OSC message. And then again, constant. And then we're going to go 105. 
And then for our symbol, we'll replicate that process and make it constant 106. So now that we're done with that, let's hit play. And you can see we have our three buttons. Let's pull up Oscillator and let's try them out. So let's go Symbol, Bass Drum, Snare. We can see that. Symbol, Bass Drum, Snare for what we're going to set up. Now, I just know in advance what the different MIDI notes are in the Blue Ridge drum set to make the sounds that we want, but let's go ahead and do that. So let's take number 104, and this is going to be our symbol, and we're going to change this to a MIDI note. And what note we want is E6. And then we want another MIDI note. And then for uh, this one, we're going to do uh, D, or sorry, yeah, D5. And of course, you could select whatever you want if you know in advance what the MIDI note is going to be for your instrument. Um, I just know this because I looked it up. And then we're going to do C1. And now they're all set. So let's go here. And now if you had your audio one selected and you were to hit these buttons, nothing's going to happen because you have a audio track selected. So now let's select the MIDI track, Blue Ridge Drums. And we can still control our volume. We can control our panning. And now let's hit that bass drum. And that's a symbol. <laughs> The symbol note is our bass drum, and that's our snare drum. Now, of course, I mixed up those numbers a little bit, but you understand what I mean. If you were going to play this, you could. So this is a super easy way to make your own, you know, customizable drum kit. And you could set your buttons throughout this. They don't have to be in any order. You don't have to keep your uh, faders and buttons on the same page. You could do a pager and set up a different drum setup. Um, that's great. I mean, that's a super easy way to uh, work in GarageBand if you don't have the ability to carry with you some sort of LPD-8 or any other uh, MIDI device. All you need is your iPad. So the options and opportunities for something like this and a way to kind of uh, open up your use for GarageBand, I mean, it's endless. There's so many different instruments that you can control. You can make a keyboard. Uh, there are different templates out there that have the shape of a piano and you could just make your own synthesizers through this. You could make your own piano. You could make a reeded instrument, a string instrument, all sorts of different things. So hopefully you learned something today and you can like the video, subscribe to the channel. Uh, there is so much more to discover with Touch OSC, which is really exciting. And at some point I'll get this studio together and give you a little bit of a studio tour of where I'm working now. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.